topic for them right what's that so jehovah's witnesses are getting tired of preaching the word <laughs> who would have thought <laughs> and it's getting out there because mm -hmm. people are talking about it and yep. you always know it's the issue if the governing body puts it out there as a concern yeah. or as something that needs to be talked about yeah most definitely so a video popped up on their page it's called we recommend ourselves as god's ministers by patience so we're just going to dissect this video a little bit because if we thought we were tired of preaching, I think the Jehovah's Witnesses now are even more tired of it, okay? Yep. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's going good. Just doing another letter writing territory, so you know how that is. Okay, well. Hey, Gabe! Good to see you! Hey, Sue, it's good to see you too. Is that Gabe? Oh, hey, baby, how's Bethel? Hey, Mom. It's busy, but great. I'm learning a lot. Oh, look who just got home from work. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Max. So, if it's possible, can you send me some more of my things? I can text you a list. Absolutely. I'll get right on it. Great. Thank you so much. Olivia, I'll let you get back to letter writing. Great. Hey. All right, we'll let you go. Love you. Okay. Love you too. Hi. Bye. 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 I guess for those that don't know, mm -hmm. Jehovah's Witnesses have more than one way of, uh, I was going to say preaching, but manipulating people. <laughs> so it's the door to door. Then they would also do phone calls. Just yeah. random numbers will call you. And then they have letter writing. They would just. They used to you look you up in the yellow pages. Yep, I remember yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And also the letter writing, like y'all see in this video. And people, some people probably did enjoy it, but a lot of people, they didn't really like it. They just did it because they forced to do it. To be honest, it was boring. Like if you're, okay, a lot of the pioneers had to find multiple ways to come up with their hours. So they did a lot of. Um, What's it, informal witnessing, yeah. they did formal witnessing, they did letter writing, and letter writing was really only fun, just like any kind of preaching. <laughs> it was only fun whenever you had your group of friends with you, okay? Right. And you guys were all, you're sharing company with each other, you know what I mean? It's not the actual act of letter writing that was fun. No, no. it wasn't, it was boring. And you're saying the same exact thing over and over again, and then including one of the brochures or tracks. That's all it is. And it makes it look like it's personal and that they're personally reaching out to you. Oh, you want to know another manipulating thing that they used to do? What you got? Remember, they would purposely look on um, obituaries. Yeah, I you forgot remember about that. that. I know, it just came to my head. Oh, that's They grimy. used to purposely look for obituaries and then they would send out letters to the family of the deceased mm -hmm. and offer them the Will suffering ever end track? They was grind <laughs> like they show even somebody at their worst possible moment in life. Yeah, they would try to take advantage. It's like it's like pickup lines. Yeah, somebody using the same pickup line. All right, it don't work on her. All right, yeah. hey baby, whoop de whoop. Dang, it didn't work. Like the yes. one to actually fall for it might feel like it was something special for them, but yes. this was used just for whoever would fall for it. Yes, and it just think about that. Like if you're grieving and then you receive something. That seems so nice in the mail, you know, where somebody took a second to like look at that you lost a family member mm -hmm. and provide you with this like good news or this promise for the future and promise for your loved one, you know, yeah. like that's a that's a nice gesture, okay? It is. But anyway, as you can see from this part of the video, like the girl's like, oh, just writing another letter. Because that's how people really feel and they have yeah. to convince you that because you're feeling something natural. This is something you don't want to do. Something you're not interested in, and they will convince you with something wrong with how you're feeling. Yes. And you need to, well, 
just keep on trying or you maybe you can look at it from this way. No, it's something you're not interested in doing. Listen, if you speak to most XJWs, I guarantee 90% <laughs> of them will say they did not enjoy the preaching work. No, very rare. You yeah. come across somebody like that. It was one of them. You can't wait till it's over. You hope they don't answer the door. That's how a lot of people felt. Yes. Yeah, get it over with. So, Olivia, I thought that you enjoyed letter writing. I don't know. It just feels like another letter, another envelope, and another black hole. Hmm. Black hole? Yeah, you know, stuff goes in, but nothing ever comes out of it. Well, she said it how it, how it is. Like She did. She said that it feels like it's a black hole, that like things are... You know, you're throwing things out and it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, that's how most of the preaching work was. Like, there wasn't many times where you found somebody that really attached to the religion, you know. And it, it kind of made you feel like you weren't a good... Um, good enough uh, publisher. Yeah. yeah. But in reality, the people that were getting Bible studies were the ones that were very pushy. And mm -hmm. really thought... It's literally like a... Uh, what are those? The, like it's like a pyramid scheme. Like yeah, the real. people who end up doing the best are the ones that are pushy and that think outside of the box on how mm -hmm. to recruit you in. Like yeah, and they uh, don't take no for an answer. Yeah, so it's like communication style and like um, a lot of the publishers that thought outside the box was like. Sadly, it was through ways of manipulation. Like, mm -hmm. oh, let me bring you some soup while you're sick. Let me yep. help you with your kids. Let me drive you to the meeting since you yeah. don't have a car. You know, like you know what it was? They, they feel like they owed them something. Yep, they pretended to offer more than just this Bible study. It was a, I'm your friend. I'm your so friend. So people take it as, oh yeah, come through. Yeah, you yeah. can come back next weekend. Yeah. Yep. And a lot of times, like whenever it was a Bible study that really clung to the truth. I noticed that it was it was something that was lacking in their lives. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like they didn't have any family already, so now they're welcomed into a community that's like their family. Like yep. I remember there was a single mom with two kids that had just moved like from a different country. She was all that by was herself. a lot of that. Yeah, there was a lot of that. Like mm -hmm. where uh, this person lacks a community. This person lacks like direction with their lives. You know, yeah. like there's there's a um. There's a need yeah, there. It's a void to fill. Yes, yeah. and the Jehovah's Witnesses are able to come in and fill that void. And that's something they always use because we had a lot of Filipinos in our area. Yes. And where else do you see this but Jehovah's Organization? Humans are humans. Certain humans will fall for booby traps. Yeah. You are just searching all over the world to find who you can scam. Yeah. And that, that doesn't mean that just one particular group or ethnicity is going to fall for it. You're just finding everybody and using the same method in the same business. It's like um, AT&T or uh, General Electric. This a worldwide thing. Mm -hmm. And you have employees. Of course, you're going to have employees in America and in Asia and mm -hmm. in South America. Yeah, because it's the same company. It's Jehovah's Witnesses. It's nothing special about it. It's a business that has jobs at every location. That's yeah. why you have all these people. And on the flip side of that, like where the Jehovah's Witnesses are always like, you're never going to find this kind of brotherly love and blah, blah, blah. There are plenty of churches out here <laughs> that real. you can call up in times of need mm -hmm. and they will fulfill that need. Passing out turkeys or Thanksgiving, like giving out yeah. clothes. It's all type of religious The big Christmas groups. runs, like back to school drives. You know what I mean? Like yeah. There's so many churches and organizations out here that give back to their communities. Mm -hmm. But Jehovah's Witnesses do not give back to the community. They give no. back to their community. And that's to if an they extent. give. Yeah, it's to an extent, 100%. Because a lot of times they're draining them of what they they have you know yep. and then the way that they give back is through this spiritual food through the brotherly love through the connection that you have in the community you know like mm -hmm. things like that and it's usually the people as individuals that are giving back not necessarily the organization but like there's good people that are in jehovah's witness organization too yeah, and they're sure. they they have big hearts you know and they want to give back to everybody but that has so much less to do with the reflection of them being a Jehovah's Witness and mm -hmm. more so to do with who they are as a person. Which is why people outside this organization are good people. Even though they teach that, oh, but they're not Jehovah's Witnesses. It's yeah. people out everywhere that you'll find that are just giving yeah. good people. Yeah. Some religious, some not. Agreed.
It's not that bad. What do you mean? You were just telling me that no one's responded to you. Okay. Yeah, I get a little antsy for replies. Like I texted my old classmate, Sarah, but she just hasn't said anything back to me yet. I just hope I didn't overdo it. What do you think? Is it too much? Do you think it's too much? It's too much. I'm sure she'll, uh, sure she'll get back to you. A quick that I want to bring out is the sister who was like, I don't know if I overdid it. And then scroll, scroll, mm. scroll on the text. Bro, like people need to understand communication styles. Like that, mm. those kinds of text messages and like me things like that, they are so overwhelming. And we mm. just know this from like even getting super, super, super long comments where they're like chastising at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I'm not, Bro, I'm not that. reading that. <laughs> I'm not wasting my time. I'm not reading that. No. And so like if... For them, it's probably like if after the first paragraph, this is just somebody that I think she knew from school or something. You look crazy. You do. You already seem like you're out of place by being part yeah. of this weird religion that people don't know about. Yes. And just imagine getting a letter in the mail from a stranger for one. Yeah. That's already like, well, who is this? Right. And then if the information behind it is bizarre, that's why it's a black hole. Yeah. Because no, a lot of people are not interested in this stuff. Just think about, like you said... In field service, how often did each publisher find somebody to convert to a Jehovah's Witness? In my time as a witness, I have never had somebody as a real Bible study come yeah. and get baptized under under me. I've never had anybody. <laughs> no, it's very rare. I'm telling you, it was like there would be a publisher, like a pioneer sister, that brought in half of the freaking congregation. Like, mm -hmm. there's always those like shining stars that like bring in the core of your congregation yep. for us that was um the couple that we were close to like they brought in multiple mm. families inside of the the kingdom hall and yeah. they were like an older couple elder pioneer couple but she she had such a big heart it was so easy to just like become like attached to her she yeah. was so she always found the voids to fill like in your life you mm -hmm. know and i think that was genuinely like who she was yeah but she it, it was she got people in like she got yeah. people in and she got them baptized it's like an employee of the month that works for a, a company that doesn't have good you know good motives yeah like uh it could be somebody like working for mcdonald's mm -hmm. they the best at selling these burgers even though the burgers are not Terrible. good for people <laughs> like they doing they tearing up people's organs yes. and stuff but you don't know you just hey man have you tried this instead we have yeah. okay this person seemed nice and genuine okay i'll get the i'll get the double right here yeah. not even knowing the consequences man that's so true but that text message was so funny because it's like so many witnesses do that even now to this day we get messages like that from people that were that are witnesses and know that we're like out like oh just come back to jehovah things are so what? different now like blah 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 like little do it, they have this not to get too sidetracked. They feel like we are discouraged. <laughs> no, we found out Santa Claus wasn't real. At, like once you know Santa Claus is fake, that's it. You're yes. not sitting and worried about you know how Santa feels about you not believing. It's like ah oh, next. But a lot of times it's a projection of themselves because yeah. they. This is how they would feel if they were out, you yep, know? That's exactly and so what they it is. can't even wrap their minds around somebody having like a fulfilling life mm -hmm. and not wanting to go back. They think that people don't want to go back due to embarrassment or due mm -hmm. to discouragement. Yeah, it's a I got a long message of that and it's a person that's close to the family and I got love for them, so I'm not gonna show or share the detail, but it was like they shared an experience that they was battling with something like, I went through this, so I understand all you have to do is just meet with your elders. And I'm like, I don't have no issues going on. Like, I just don't want to, I'm not, I don't go. Yeah, I'm cool on that. That's it. I ain't yeah. sitting out here struggling and fiending, <laughs> and scared to come back with everybody going to think. I'm cool. I don't want no parts. You cannot pay me to go back to the kingdom. I'm home. telling you, but it also shows you how many people, and this is not just in the religion, but people in general live in Fear. Like yep. They are so afraid of being who they are. They mm -hmm. are so afraid of standing on what they truly believe yep. versus what everybody else wants them to believe. It's not easy to be 
the one that sticks out in the crowd. You no. know what I mean? Like that's it not. It takes confidence. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. It takes confidence to do that. It takes confidence to create boundaries. You know, mm -hmm. and I know because I used to be timid and like a pushover like all those things and those are things that i will still battle with but like it's so much easier for me to say no now because because mm -hmm. you feel you of? once you like, feel after it's like all right problem solved like i don't want to do that yep period that's how i was already feeling yeah and now i don't have to battle with me not being true to myself now mm -hmm. it's, I, I stood on that bet yeah agreed <laughs> this is where you and gabe would fish right yeah we learned a lot of lessons about fishing here. So lately, preaching's felt like a black hole, right? We have the right equipment, but what does a fisherman need more than anything? Second Corinthians 6, 4. It says, but in every way we recommend ourselves as God's ministers by now, what does verse 6 say, Olivia? It says, by purity, by knowledge, by patience. Patience. It helps us to keep trying again and again, to not give up. And we're not casting into a black hole, but into a blue sea full of deserving ones. Now, maybe we can't see it, but Jehovah knows they're there. And it may take some time, but if we're patient together, we'll find them. Now, Irene's got some great ideas on how to make our letter writing more personal. You know what I think was funny about this analogy? All right, let's see. Okay, so the dad was so happy. Like, he thought himself as a really good dad in this like let's do something different for family worship you know we're gonna go out fishing and now he's teaching his children like you know what the most important part about a fisherman is to catch fish it's patience but think about that analogy like a fisherman versus fish they are comparing you as the fisherman as the person that is publishing right to a fish that's not an equal dynamic no like that's that's somebody who wants to eat you and kill you <laughs> yep. versus the fish why are you comparing that with the patients you know what i mean like when you think about emails it's called fishing for a reason you're baiting and mm -hmm. you're fishing to get something you know so it like the governing body did not do well with this analogy well the only people that would catch on is us <laughs> they ain't catching on. How do you, you not catch? Like, how as a witness are you not catching on to that? That we're tricking. We're. I'm going to manipulate you to fall for a trap. Bait and fish. But right away, I'm not going to let you know that that's what I'm doing until whoop, got you off the water on this hook. Now you in my hands. And that yeah. is where it turns into the bait and switch. Yeah. Because we all know once you actually become a Jehovah's Witness, which okay, you threw out the line. You're becoming a Bible study. Oh, you fished them. They're baptized. Now we get to switch it up because that's whenever things change. Once you become mm -hmm. a baptized Jehovah's Witness, that's right. whenever everything else carries differently. Just think about if you were to tell somebody as a publisher this, you know, unmarried, but living with the, uh, the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to get that together or, you know, you're going to get this fellowship down the line if you become one of us. No, it's, you know, you Jehovah forgives and. You know, that's something you have to do and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But once you are baptized, oh, if you mess up, guess what we're going to do to you? It's, whoa, wait a minute. Why didn't you? Tell what's me the, that. What's, yeah, what's the switch up about? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it could be such small things, too. Like, but while you're getting, uh, while it's the Bible study, they're telling you, like, oh, God is a forgiving God. And, you know, like, you can always repent and all these things. But they don't tell you about all the shunning that truly happens, yep. you know? Another video was the August broadcast. Listen, the, the way that they word these things, so they went from this sacred secret, as they always talk about, mm -hmm. and Jehovah connected with this prophet mm -hmm. and promised this, and these are things that we didn't understand until later, mm -hmm. but it didn't happen for them, and down the line it happened for this one, and this is the thing that the governing body does. They will take things that aren't exactly in the Bible yeah. that anybody else that's a Jehovah's Witness isn't able to read. And they'll go, here, we'll take that off your hands and we'll study this. And we can come and say whatever we want about this scripture. 
and everybody just has to buy it. This yeah. is a sacred <sighs> secret, yeah. only that we can understand. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's really saying. And all they're doing is prolonging everybody that is tired of waiting. Oh, well, just look how it was supposed to happen in, you know, this person's lifetime. But it wasn't until David. And then David thought it would be his lifetime. And they set this pattern of, just in case you question why the 1914 generation passed away. And then the next one passed away. Yes. And now we're here. Yes. Well, just don't worry about it. It'll keep going. And this is how... I used to watch like HBO documentaries and stuff, and I remember watching one on pimps yeah. and how pimps operate. They treat the witnesses like pimps and HOEs because <laughs> the whole way a pimp is able to manipulate a woman is you do what I want you to do mm -hmm. for my benefit here in the present and in the future. You'll be rewarded. You will be rewarded for that. Yeah. And that's why people go, why was somebody? Well, somebody was mentally manipulated by yeah. a person. And they're sold a dream. Yes. And this dream keeps going on and on until this person is sucked dry. And that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They are pimping the members to go, the new system will be here. Just keep, I know you're tired, but just, just keep working hard and it, it'll get here. Uh, Jehovah blesses those who are patient. Jehovah blesses those who, who wait. Mm -hmm. Jehovah blesses those who stay faithful and loyal to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the whole time, this Jehovah is... The governing body. <laughs> the whole time. Plot twist. Yes. And it's crazy how they do that to their members. And it's not like it's just happened. It's just happening now. Yeah. This has happened throughout history since Jehovah's Witnesses became a religion. It continues to happen to where they, they keep like dangling something. Right. And they, they're dangling paradise in front of its members' faces. And it's always, oh, it's it's right around the corner. Oh, mm -hmm. um, wh what the heck did Brother Let's say? We're, the last days, the last, last days, 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 last so. days, last days, whatever. And they say, count money, like, yeah, just, you, you're almost there. Last Counting days. all your money up. Yes. And so, but they wait for these generations to get older. Like, who is around from, like, 1975 era who can sit there and talk mm. about how that experience was? You know what I mean? Who's still actively a Jehovah's Witness. There's so many people who don't even know about that who are Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, they've been bombarded with so much information that they, they forgot forget about, about it. it. Yes. And so, and the way that the organization continues to change and go differently, you know, like it becomes a different religion with the years as the years move on, like because of how many doctrines change. And who was here to remember it? <laughs> but yeah, y'all, basically. <laughs> The Jehovah's Witnesses are tired of waiting on Armageddon. They're tired of waiting on these promises that have not been fulfilled. They're tired of doing the preaching work because yep. nothing's coming out of it. And I think that a lot has changed too. Again, since COVID, like it's the era. It ruined it. Yeah, because it's the era of awakening on a mass level, on more than just religion, you know? Mm -hmm. So I can't even imagine the way that their numbers are set up now post COVID, you know? Yep. And like they always told us, if you're hearing it from the platform, it's because it's been an issue within the organization. Yeah. Yep. And that's what it comes to. But we just wanted to touch on that. In the meantime, y'all know our Instagram at Awaken Truths IG and TikTok. We getting that rolling. Shout out to y'all. We passed 500 uh, followers right now. Thanks to y'all. And that's at Awaken Truths LLC. We got what else for them? We have our healing journals. We have the normal version and the Pimo version. If you're trying to, you know, do a little self-discovery. Yep. And, oh, the protest this weekend. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Please, I hope you guys are going to be there. We're going to be streaming it from our platform. So, if you can't be there in person, be there online to see what is going on. And I think that's about it. Yep. Right? And that's Friday, September 13th. Yeah. Tomorrow, actually. So, yeah, yeah tune in for that. Yep, that's it. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.